Hello. So, I'm here. I'm back from Toronto. It's great to be back, obviously. Um, I thought it might be an idea to give my take on the week, if anyone's interested. Um, having said that, I think Nora Crest summed it up really the best when she talked about the therapeutic aspect of such gatherings of critics of the Scientology cult. Um, it certainly is therapeutic, it's informative, you know, you think sometimes, well, you never think you know everything, we, I don't think any of us fall into that mistake, fall into that um, error of reasoning. However, you find that, oh, I didn't know that, um, we have what we would, what I would cheerily call a wognition, which is the um, a play on words. The Scientology word is a cognition, which simply means for those who were never a Scientologist to, or who haven't studied this subject, um, a cognition is when you have a realization about life, something that you didn't realize before. Well, a wognition is the exact opposite of that. It's what you realize about Scientology that you hadn't realized while you were in, and it's helping you to become more human. It's, it's actually returning you back to the human being that you were before you got involved with this crazy subject that, let's be honest, tries to turn you into a superhuman being and fails at every step of the way. So information is one of the things you pick up. The sense of comradeship is incredible. It can't be stressed. Um, in addition to that, meeting people who I acknowledge certainly saved my life. John Atak, the author, definitely. Jerry Armstrong, because of what he did with regards to... Uh, <laughs> I nearly said safeguarding the materials, but essentially that's what he did. Like when he was um, working with L. Ron Hubbard's biographer and they had access to all this material that proved Hubbard was an absolute liar and that... You know, every step of the way, he just dreamed it up as he went along. Imagination. So without Jerry, you know, there'd be a, we'd have a lot more work to do, let's be honest. And Caroline, of course, nod to Caroline. Um, Paul A. Cooper's book, its effect cannot be underestimated. I, I, I think between Russell Miller, John Atak and Paul A. Cooper, I owe them my life for allowing me to wake up uh, for allow for having written the books that they've written that they've that they've written um, and for me having come along and read them you see the thing is and this is particularly aimed at Scientologists who think ah it's just end theta it's all rubbish it actually isn't it's factual stuff it tells the truth about Scientology and L Ron Hubbard and that's all we do we just simply tell the truth about Scientology and L Ron Hubbard I don't know anybody who hates them. I don't know anybody who's anti-religious. Personally, I don't give a damn what people believe. It does come down to behavior. So that's another thing we get from the whole from the whole thing. We get this wonderful chance to meet people like Paul E. Cooper, John A. Tack, Jerry Armstrong. If you ever had any questions for those people, you could ask those questions and have them answered. Um, so, Toronto. People began to arrive, assemble. It was wonderful seeing Tory again, uh, meeting Spanky for the first time. Hannah Whitfield is an absolute queen, and I love that girl to bits. She's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Um, Nancy, Jesse, I mean, where do you even begin? It's so amazing to be in the same company as these people. If any question occurs to you that you always wanted to ask, you can ask it. There's no guarantee you'll get it answered, but you can ask it. I always wanted to ask Jesse a question. He answered it on stage, but hey, it was fun to ask it anyway. So yeah, um, the camaraderie, the, the feeling of being there, doing something. Now on a slightly more um, somber note, uh, the conference kicked off on Monday, and by halfway through the day, I was coming down with the worst head cold that I've ever had. 
Um, I really think I must have heard OT3 one too many times, or maybe 400 too many times. Whatever, I was pretty suffering. I started taking pills um, on Monday, and I stopped taking pills on Friday morning when I actually felt well enough to contribute a little something towards the conference. So I feel my own input wasn't as much as it could have been, but I wasn't physically capable, and I certainly wasn't mentally capable of actually giving more. So I apologize to the organizers for not giving more, um, but obviously they knew what I, what I was going through. It was, pre it was pretty rough, it was pretty rough, but it was just a bloody head cold when all said and done. Um, but it did have the effect of um, knocking me for six. So anyway, as soon as the conference was over, I was better. You might call it a severe form of PTSness to all the SPs. Oh wait, hang on. If I'm an SP, then ah, never mind. You get the picture. So yeah, just just to reiterate what Nora said, it was a fantastic few days, five days, in fact, despite my um, severe head cold, my debilitating ailment. Um, I still managed to get so much from it in terms of information, in terms of healing, and I even was able to turn down the offer of Narcanon at the end of the week. So yeah, um, I wouldn't begin to tell people how to run a conference if I wasn't involved in it, and I certainly don't intend to. I certainly run any conferences I do in a certain way with certain um, ground rules, you might say. Um, I think anyone who organizes a conference of this nature, exposing the abuses and fraud of Scientology and getting down to the nitty gritty of what the organization actually really is and not what they just well, not what they say it is then you need, you know, it's it's definitely, uh, you know, hats off to anybody willing to put their self on the line. Um, there are a lot of people, uh, this is going to sound slightly critical and snide and snidey, but there are a lot of people who actually don't do anything, who criticise people who do things. Um, and there are people that do stuff on a daily, weekly basis to bring down this cult, and there are other people who just seem to spend their time attacking those people that do that. So I, I've no time, basically, for naysayers. I've no time for anybody attacking critics, unless, of course, that criticism or that attack is, is warranted. In a lot of cases, it actually isn't. Um, it's just uh, based on bullshit. It's based on false information. It's based on a person's opinions rather than facts. And all, all this can be checked and verified, of course, if you ask the right person the right question. So, um, outcome, don't know, don't know, what more can I say, Toronto was a kick-ass conference, we've seen going clear, we've seen getting clear, what's next? I think every continent should be having their own conferences, like there's a, there's a lot of um, SPs, ex-members in the Los Angeles reason, they could all come together. They could do something like this over a weekend or even even a one nighter. Um, wherever there's ex, wherever there's Scientology, there's ex members. Just bring it all together. Just just get yourselves organised. It doesn't take much. To spam the media is the easiest thing in the world. You just simply go onto your Google search. You find out who the media outlets are, and you tell them what you're doing, and they'll be interested or not. Again, you know, if they're not interested, there's nothing you can do about it. If they are then give them what they want, whatever they ask for. So, yeah. Um, okay, I think I've talked myself out. So, yeah, conference, Toronto, fantastic. Would I go again? Absolutely. Is every continent in the world got to set up one of these conferences and expose the fraud and abuse of this criminal organization? Oh, yes.